Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. So, so everything. So I thought today needs a day, a day, a name. And so I, I searched, I, I tried to figure out what would we call today. And I finally come up with it. Today is going to be Get Rid of the Leftovers Sunday. That's going to be our title, Get Rid of the Leftovers Sunday. And, and hear me out for a moment. How many of you had turkey on Thursday? Okay. How many of you had turkey again on Friday? How many of you had turkey again on Saturday? I mean, because we think about it, we, we, we on Thanksgiving, we, we have that turkey, and, and you always have leftovers. So then on Friday, you can take some of that, and maybe you heat it up, and put it between two slices of bread with a little bit of mayonnaise, and all that, that's a good turkey sandwich. And then, then, then by Saturday, you're thinking, okay, let, let's take all these leftovers, let's throw them all in a pot crust and have a turkey pot pie. Or, I mean, you got all these things, but what happens with all those leftovers after today? You pack them in your lunch for the week, okay. Feed them to the dog. Feed them to the dog. Let me tell you what normally happens. Most of the time, what happens to those leftovers is they get shoved to the back of the refrigerator. And the next thing you know, you, you got all the, uh, to, to where it comes that day, you know, maybe you come home with a gallon of milk and, and you're trying to, you're like, I don't know where to put it, or you realize you have no more storage dishes left. And, and you start pulling this stuff out and you're looking at it and you're asking the question, wonder what this was and wonder when we ate it. Because most of the time, what happens is leftovers, you know, after a day or two, they just kind of get shoved in the back and totally forgot about. They're going to hang around for a while, but we're going to forget about them. But they're always going to be there. So to keep that junk from building up, I want to declare today is get rid of the leftovers Sunday. So that, that's going to be my idea, my proclamation today is get rid of the leftovers Sunday. And you know, in Peter's first letter to the Christians scattered abroad, Peter kind of said the same thing. Now, he wasn't talking about leftover turkey and leftover mashed potatoes, but he did tell the believers that if they wanted to make room for this new way of life, if they wanted to live for Jesus, they had to get rid of the leftovers from their old life. They had to get rid of some of that junk that was just kind of hanging around. They had to get rid of that junk that was hiding in the back of their lives that just, sometime I might need that. Sometime it might be there. No matter how nasty it was, Peter said, there's some things you have to get rid of. There's some leftovers in your life that, that you have to get rid of. Well, let's look at what he says. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. So get rid of every kind of evil, every kind of deception, hypocrisy, jealousy, and every kind of slander. Desire God's pure word as newborn babes desire milk. Then you will grow in your salvation. Certainly, you have tasted that the Lord is good. So this morning, I'm going to declare this day as get rid of the leftovers Sunday. And I want to begin by seeing five leftovers that we need to get rid of in our lives. Five things that, that I think we need, that they need to go if we're going to follow Jesus. But, but first of all, let's talk for a moment about what, what I'm talking about with leftovers. I'm not talking about last night's pot roast that you're going to eat today. I'm talking about stuff that's a part of our life, that are part of our old life. And we just kind of shoved it in the back with the idea we might use that one day. They might come to that place where I'm going to need that. That's going to have to be a part of my life in the future. We just kind of shove them in the back and leave them there. There may be, it may be a situation where it's going to have to come out. I'm going to have, that's what I'm talking about with leftovers. So for those leftovers, Peter says, they need to go. If we're going to live for Christ, and that's what I want you to hear this morning, if we're going to live for Jesus, 
these leftovers need to go in our lives. So leftover number one, Peter says, get rid of every kind of evil. Every kind of evil. The, the King James word for that is mouse. It says, to get away or take it rid of all malice. Malice, here's what malice is. Malice is that desire to see something bad happen to someone else. That's what malice is. Malice is the desire to see something bad happen to someone else. Let, let me give you an example. Let's say on the news, you see that some pedophile has gotten arrested. And, and, and they're, they, he's been convicted and, and they're going to send him to jail. And in your mind you're thinking they'll take care of him there. That's malice. It, it's that type of, of, of an attitude where we're wanting something bad to happen to someone else. But I want you to notice something about malice. Malice isn't really an action. So, so malice isn't something that we can say, I want to get rid of this in my life. I just want to remove it and I'll be okay. Because it's not really an action. We can't just say, I'm not going to do that anymore. Malice is more of a state of mind. Malice is more of a condition of the heart. So here's what I think Peter's telling us. Peter's saying that first leftover that needs to go in our lives is our thought process. That thought process of the old man the, 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 that's holding on to, to that type of thinking. The old me thinks, I want to get even. Or they'll get what's coming to them. And, and we might sit here and think, oh, no, I would never do that. But you know, how often something happens to you or, or, or something happens to your family and your first thought is, I'd get back in this way. That's malice. I'd make them pay this way. I wish this would happen to them. That's malice. Peter says that's a leftover that has to go. When the old man means me is thinking, I want to eat. I want to make them pay. I can't focus on Christ if those old thoughts are still hanging around. So maybe this morning, the leftover that you need to get rid of is malice. And if malice is still hanging around in your life, it's got to go if you're going to follow Jesus. But Peter gives us other leftovers. The second leftover, he says, is every kind of deception. <clears throat> every kind of deception. And here's what Peter's talking about. He's talking about trickery. He's talking about that deception that we use to get what we want. I think the King James word for, the, for that is guile. That guile, that deception, that trickery that we use to get what we want. Let me give you a biblical example of this. Y'all remember the Old Testament story of Jacob and Esau? Uh, Jacob and Esau were twins. Uh, when they were in the womb, God told their mom, Rebecca, that, that the younger, the older, would serve the younger. And that means Esau, who was the firstborn, was going to serve Jacob, the second born. Now, that wasn't the way it was done in that day. In that day, the oldest, the first one, even if they were twins and they were only born minutes apart, the firstborn would be the one who, who got the blessing. They would be the one who received the majority of the inheritance. The firstborn would be the one that the others in the family, I don't care if they had a hundred kids, the firstborn would be the one who was the boss. They were the one in charge. But God told Rebecca, the oldest one is going to serve the youngest one. Well, as time goes on, the, the boys are grown up, and, and Isaac's getting old. And, and, and Isaac comes along, and he says, you know, son, he goes to Esau, his oldest. Go and, and kill me a deer. Make that stew I like. Come bring it back to me, and I'm going to give you the blessing. So he goes off to kill it. But in the meantime, Rebecca comes up with a scheme. She knew what God had said, that the, the youngest was going to be the one that, that they served. So she comes up with this scheme. Jacob goes along with it, and they deceive Isaac. Now, that's what God said was, that, that this was going to happen, but do you think that's the way God wanted it to happen? No. God doesn't want us to use trickery. 
trickery. God doesn't want us to use deception. God doesn't want us to use guile. But often that's what we do. Folks, I've, I've had ministers look me in the eye and lie to my face. Ministers. I've seen pastors stand before large groups of people and lie through their teeth. Why do they do that? They do that to get what they want. Maybe to make them look better, to have something their way. But, but they do that to, what's, the Bible calls that deception. God. Peter says, if that's a leftover in our life, it needs to get over. If deception is a leftover in your life this morning, and you want to live for Jesus, that leftover's got to go. So, whether it's all kinds of evil, deception, or the third leftover that has to go is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, hypocrisy is kind of like a cousin to guile or to deception. And, and here's what hypocrisy is. It's pretending to be something you're not. And, and actually, the, the term comes from the theater. And I want to show you what hypocrisy is. So to do that, I'm going to need some help this morning. So any of our kids that want to come and help me, you come and, and, and I want to show you what hypocrisy is. All right, guys, I have something for you this morning. Here you go. This is yours. You can keep it. You can have it for as long as you want. Let me, let me get one off yours. Does anybody know what it is? It's a mask. It's a mask. What's it's a mask of? Somebody had to tell me because I didn't know. It's not a Let's see. It's Shrek. No, it's not Shrek. It's a rhinoceros. It's a rhinoceros. Is that, that's what you were going to say, right? I was going to say that. Okay. It's a massive rhinoceros. And what I want you to do is I want you to put it up on your face. Okay. Now, when you hold it there, did you become a rhinoceros? No. No. But hold it over again. But you look like a rhinoceros now. You, you have a mask on a rhinoceros. So, 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 but am I a rhinoceros? Somebody said you weren't fat enough to be a rhinoceros. So am I a rhinoceros? No, I'm not a rhinoceros. You know, the Bible talks about hypocrisy or hypocrites. And here's what that is. That's somebody putting on a false face. It's actually a term that came from the theater. In Jesus' day, theater was big. There was a lot of folks in the theater. Everybody went to the theater to watch shows. But it wasn't like today. They didn't have cameras and they didn't have all kinds of other stuff going on. The only thing they had was masks. And all the people in the theaters were guys. No women. So if you were going to play a girl's part, you know what you'd do? You wouldn't dress up like a girl. You didn't have time to go change clothes and costumes and do makeup. You would put up a girl's mask. You were pretending to be something you're not. Just like if I put this mask up and I pretended to be a rhinoceros. Am I really a rhinoceros? No, but I'm pretending to be something I'm not. And, and, and that's what a hypocrite is. And when Peter tells us, don't be hypocrites, that's like putting on a false face or a mask and pretending to be something we're not. So these are yours to keep. You can take your crayons that you got with your bulletin and, and collar it if you want to, but these are yours. Let's give these guys a big hand. You know, when we think about hypocrisy, and hypocrisy is nothing more than pretending to be something we're not. Why do we do that? Why do we pretend to be something that we're not? Is God impressed when we pretend to be something we're not? No. So if God's not impressed by, who are we trying to impress by? Other people. That, that's what hypocrisy is, pretending to be something you're not to impress other people. And do you know what group of people in today's culture gets called hypocrites the most? Christians. People in church. You've heard it. I've heard it many times. 
And it usually comes from somebody who don't want to be in church. And it comes from somebody, you invite them to come to church. Hey, I'd love you to come to Oldfields Baptist Church. And they say, I can't come down there because why? There are too many hypocrites in that church. Now, I've got a great answer for that. When they tell me that, I said, no, we have empty seats. Come on down. But you know, when, when they think about it, why do they look at folks in the church and call them hypocrites? I've come up with two possible solutions to that. Solution number one is they do not understand Christianity. And because they do not understand Christianity, they're mistaken about their assessment of what a Christian should be. So there's a possibility when they say there's hypocrites in the church, it's a possibility they don't understand what a Christian really should be, and because of that, they're mistaken. The other possibility I came up with is they do understand what a Christian should be. They understand that it's fine, but they realize that there are some in their churches who are pretending to be something they're not. That there are folks in church, and I think the reason we hear that so often, the church is full of hypocrites, is because there are so many people in church putting on a false face to try to become so, or to appear to be something they're not. They want others to think they've arrived as a Christian. They are successfully living all the aspects of Christian life. That's what they, that's the false face that many put on. And you see it all the time. They want others to think their marriage is perfect. They want others to think that their family is perfect. They want to come across to others as their lives are perfect. I heard a pastor one time in, in teaching a lesson made the comment, I can't relate to that because I've never done anything like that wrong. I wanted to toot his horn for him. But that many times, what we do is put on that false face of hypocrisy, pretending to be something we're not. But you know the truth is? If we're born again, we are nothing more than a sinner saved by grace. We haven't arrived as Christians. We're sinners saved by grace. And I think we need to start acting like it. Instead of trying to present ourselves as something we're not. Peter says, if you have hypocrisy as one of your leftovers, get rid of it. But there's something else we need to see. That something is our number four. And that's jealousy. The leftover we need to get rid of may be jealousy. Jealousy is wanting what you don't have. That's jealousy. Wanting what you don't have. We see it all the time in church. This person has position. I want position. This person has, they are for a, friend, a circle of friends that I want friends in that circle. This person has things I want. That's jealousy. Wanting something we don't have. But you know the truth is, as Christians, we need to recognize there's nothing we need. God has given us the most important thing. And the author of Hebrews says in chapter 13, verse 5, Be happy with what you have, because God has said, I will never abandon you or leave you. We don't have to pretend to be something else. We don't have to be jealous of what someone else has, does, or is. Because we have the most important thing. We have Jesus. Everything else is less than that. So Peter's telling us to have Christ in our life. What we need to do is quit worrying about the perishable things of others. Focus on Jesus Christ. If jealousy is a leftover from our own life, it needs to go. But there's a fifth one Peter gives us. And the fifth leftover is this. Every kind of slander. Slander. What's that? Peter could probably be talking about that poison that comes from our mouth. You know what James said in James chapter 3? James talks about our tongues. And he says, our tongues are full of deadly poison, and taming it is the most difficult thing to do. He tells us, 
Our words can be poison. So when he talks about get rid of every kind of slander, he can be talking about that poison that, that comes out. But you know what? I think Peter's talking about more than that. I think here when he says, you know, get rid of all the all kinds of evil and, and hypocrisy and guile and malice, and, and he lists all these things, and he says, and every kind of slander, I think what Peter is saying is, more than just what we speak, I think he's telling us whatever else, what other leftovers we have, everything else in our own life needs to go if we're going to follow Jesus. All that junk that we, we've thrown in the back somewhere, all that those leftovers that the same, I think when he says here every kind of slander, I think he's talking about everything that's not covered with the first four leftovers. It needs to go. So folks, I want to declare to you, I want to declare that, that today is get rid of the leftovers Sunday. And whatever are those things that, that are lingering in our lives, whatever are those things that are lingering in your lives, they need to go. That they've got to go. We've got to get rid of the leftovers. But I want to give you a warning. And you need to listen to this warning. You can't do it. You can't get rid of the leftovers. After all this that I've told you about the five leftovers, I'm going to tell you, you can't do it. You can't just declare, I'm not going to be a hypocrite anymore. You, you can't just say, I'm going to control my tongue. You, you can't just say, I'll stop. It's not going to happen. You can say, I'll stop warning things I don't have. But it's not going to happen. You can't do it. I can stand here and tell you, get rid of the leftovers, but you can't do it. Because when we try, we're just like an empty fridge. You realize, you know, if you go and go, okay, I'm just cleaning everything out of the fridge. An empty fridge is no good either. An empty fridge is actually going to run more than it did with food in there. And an empty fridge is going to develop a smell with nothing in it. So an empty fridge is no good. You can't get rid of these leftovers. And here's why I tell you that. Because we have to replace it with something else. We can't just say, I'm not going to be a hypocrite anymore. I won't slander anymore. No malice will come from me. It won't happen. The only way we can do it is replace it with something else. Verse 2 tells us what to replace it with. We replace it with God's word. Desire God's pure word, it says. What do we replace it with? All these leftovers that we have to get rid of, we replace with the word of God. Because as we put the word of God in, there's not room for the leftovers anymore. And two things I want you to know about the word of God. Number one, is the word of God has to become our desire. He says, desire the pure word of God like a baby desires milk. Anybody ever been around a hungry baby before? I'll tell you what, next time you're around a hungry baby, here's all I want you to do. You know, what do, what do they do when they're hungry? That's exactly what they do. <laughs> Only a whole lot louder and a whole lot more, but thank you for not going louder and more. You know, they're going to squawk, aren't they? When that baby's hungry, it's going to squawk. It's going to cry. And, and, and you're going to walk up to it and you're going, I know you're hungry, but you'll be okay. And it'll stop, right? <laughs> <laughs> or you're going to say, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll feed you in two hours. Just wait. And that baby's going to go, okay. What's that baby going to do? It's going to keep on crying. What's going to stop it from crying? The milk. So it says, desire the word of God like a baby desires milk. And that means we have to desire the hearing of the word of God. When we, we, we desire to, to hear the preaching, hear the teaching of the word of God. We desire to read the word of God. To, to be able to see those pages of scripture eh, before our eyes. We desire to study the word of God. To, to dig deep and, and, and know what it means. 
We have a desire to memorize the Word of God. We have a desire to take the Word of God and throughout the day meditate on what it says. We have the word of desire to take the word of God and apply it to our lives. As a newborn babe desires milk. Peter says, well, we have to replace all this junk with? We have to replace it with the word of God. So the word of God has to become our desire. But the second thing I, you, you have to know about the word of God is that only when the word of God becomes our desire will we grow. Only when it becomes, look what verse 2 says. Desire God's pure word as newborn babies desire milk. Then you will grow in your salvation. Just like that baby desires that milk, we desire the word of God. So, can we say, Lord, I'm going to get rid of the leftovers today? We can. But unless we're replacing it, with a desire for the Word of God, it's probably not going to happen. How many times have we said, Lord, I'm going to live better for you? Lord, I'm going to go to church more regular. Lord, I'm going to read my Bible more. Lord, I'm going to pray more. How long does it last? Every year at the beginning of the year, I find folks, New Year's resolution, going to go to church. It might last until February. Something happens, something comes up. This took place. We're not here. <laughs> we have to replace it with something. Now, I want to warn you. Because you might say, God, I realize I have these leftovers in my life. And I want to get rid of them. And we start by telling God, this is sin. I want to confess it. I want to be forgiven of it. I want to turn from it. But here's our problem. We think we need to go from Leftovers to here, like that. Well, we get this idea that I need to go from a life full of leftovers from the old life to a great desire for the Word of God, hearing it, reading it, studying it, memorizing it, meditating on it, and then applying it. Just like that. And it's not going to happen. And, and when it don't happen, we get discouraged. So we quit. But notice what the Bible tells us. Desire the word of God like a baby desires milk. Would you give your two-month-old a T-bone steak? No. No parent in the right mind would. Would you hand that one-month-old a green bean and say, here, start chomping? No. So what do you do? You start with the milk. And then next you take the milk and you mix it with the cereal. And then you go to more of the cereal. And then you start with the strain puree, used to be vegetables. And then you start adding these, and then you start to go to the, the vegetables with little pieces. I remember when our children was, was, was little, one of the things that, that they liked was hot dogs. But would you ever go to your toddler and just hand them a hot dog and say, here, start eating? Mamas, what did you do? You cut them things up in, and, and the smaller they were, the smaller the pieces. Why? Because they'd get choked. So you would cut them things up really little so that they would, but as they got older, the pieces got bigger to one day you said, here, eat. So how do we replace all the leftovers to become one who desires the word of God? We do it in increments, just like a baby grows in their food. We do that just in, in, in sometimes small steps, starting with that desire for the Word. Lord, I do desire your Word. And as we begin to hear it, as we begin to read it, it becomes more alive in us. And it goes from, I have to read the Word of God. To I get to read the Word of God, to I have to have the Word of God. And as that progression takes place in your life, as your life fills with that desire for the Word of God, the leftovers get pushed out. So today, what I challenge you for is just to, God, help.
Help me to grow a desire for your word. Because I realize these leftovers have to go. But I can't get rid of them on my own. So help me to grow a desire for your word so those leftovers get out. And maybe this morning as, as I pray, you just need to take that prayer to God. Lord, my life's full of leftovers from the old life. And I know to follow you, they have to go. But God, I can't do it. I've tried too many times and I've failed every time. So God, help me to grow a desire let me just start by reading my Bible every day. Help me to, to want to hear the teaching and preaching of it as often as I can. And let that grow in me. And as I grow, the leftovers will go. Let's pray together. Almighty God, our lives are so full of leftover junk. And we want rid of it. But Lord, every time we try, we fail. And then we get discouraged. And then we give up. But Lord, we, we want that junk going. We want rid of the leftovers. So God, help us to begin to grow to a desire for your Lord. In Jesus' name we pray.